In this lesson, I'll show you how to find the volume of a 3D parallelogram known as a parallel pipette. The first of two questions reads, find the volume of the parallel pipette determined by the vectors A, B, and C. And we'll assign the components of these vectors in a moment. Now, just to give you a visual of what a parallel pipette looks like, take a look at this illustration. Notice that this three-dimensional parallelogram is made up of three main vectors, A, B, and C. The cross product vector, B times C, is perpendicular to both B and C. And the angle which is formed between the cross product vector and A is theta. That can be used to find the height of the parallelogram. Now, of course, we can generate a formula using the information found here, but there's an easier way. It turns out that if you find what is known as the scalar triple product, you end up finding the volume of the parallel pipette. And that can be summarized right here, where if you find the determinant of the three vectors, you automatically find the volume of the 3D parallelogram. Now, of course, if you forget this formula, you can always remember that it is the dot product of A times the cross product of B and C. So going back to our question, we haven't been given the x, y, and z components of vectors A, B, and C, so let's come up with them. Let's say that vector A has the x, y, and z components of 6, 3, and negative 1. 6, 3, and negative 1. Vector B has the x, y, z components of 0, 1, and 2. And vector C is 4, negative 2, and 5. So what I'm going to do is find the cross product of B and C. And that can easily be done by using this little trick where you write this out twice. 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2, 4, negative 2, 5, 4, negative 2, and 5. Then you find the product of these two numbers, which is 5. 1 times 5 is 5. And you subtract by the product of these two numbers. So 5 minus minus 4 is positive 9. That's the x component of the cross product b times c. To find the y component, once again, multiply 2 times 4, 8, minus the product of this diagonal, which is 0. We end up with 8. And lastly, 0 times negative 2, that's 0, minus 1 times 4 is negative 4. So we found the cross product, b times c. And I'm going to multiply this vector by vector a, the dot product. And when it comes to finding the dot product, that's not hard to do. You should end up with a number. You actually multiply each of the corresponding components. So 9 times 6 is 54. Remember, what I'm finding here is the scalar triple product, plus 3 times 8, that's 24, plus negative 4 times negative 1, that's positive 4. 54 plus 4 is 58, plus 24 is 82. So the parallel pipette has a volume of 82 units cubed. Now let's move on to question 2. This time we're asked, use the scalar triple product to show that the vector a, b, and c are coplanar. Going back to here, we're told that if the volume comes out as 0, the vectors then must lie in the same plane. And that's what's referred to as coplanar. So we'll do the same thing as before, find the scalar triple product and see if it's zero. I'll start by finding the cross product of B and C. So I'll write down two minus one, four, two minus one, four, and C is zero, negative nine, 18, zero, negative nine, 18. Using the same pattern, explained before, negative 1 times 18 is negative 18 minus the product of these two. That's equal to 18. That's the x component of b times c. Next, we'll take 4 times 0. That's 0. Minus 18 times 2. That's negative 36. 2 times negative 9 is negative 18 minus the product of these two. We end up with negative 18. We'll take this vector now and multiply it to a. Essentially, we're finding the dot product of a and b times c. For that, we'll take 1 times 18. That's equal to 18 plus 4 times negative 36. That's negative 144 plus negative 18 times negative 7. That's equal to 126. 18 plus 126 is 144 minus 144 that is equal to zero. This suggests that two of the vectors 
shown here are on the same plane or coplanar. And there you have it. That is how to determine the volume of the parallel pipette.